due to uh, circumstances which have got absolutely nothing to do with sailing, oh, yeah. I'm afraid to say we haven't been able to film an episode this week. But we do have something else, don't we, Bev? We do. Um, most of you haven't been with us since the very early days. So what we've done is we've gone through the archive and we have taken the episodes where we bought the boat in Scotland, sailed her down through the Isle of Man to England. And what we've done is we've constructed a little movie and... It's only the sailing portions of that video, that journey, the delivery run, and we thought you might like to see that. So for those of you who maybe haven't seen the early day stuff, I'll apologise for the quality of the sound and the photography. We do things a bit differently now, don't we? Hopefully a lot better. <laughs> Hopefully a lot better. But this is it, in the raw, the delivery run from Scotland to Liverpool after we purchased Salty Lass. So I hope you enjoy that. Give us a bit of feedback in the comments and let us know. Okay. See you till next time. Yeah, hopefully we'll get hopefully we'll get our act together. <laughs> Cast off forward. Are you free? Let me just be a second, I've got myself in a tangle. Please don't. I've got the sails up. Ah, oh, because of the wind condition, uh, we're not. We're doing a staggering. One and oh, knots. one and a half knots. <laughs> but this is a good day to start your start your adventure because it's calm and you're not having to worry too much. But yeah, one and a half knots. But we are sailing. And listen to that. Oh yeah, that's no engine. <laughs> it's a real shame that we're having to make what I call passage at the moment. Because the wind is coming straight down between the island over there and the land. And um, this would be a great day for just sailing between the islands and, and it would be great. But because we want to make passage, we need to go that way. So the only way to do that is put the iron sail on and just motor it down. And it's only the fact that we're trying to keep reasonably close to your deadline, isn't it? Yeah, because otherwise if we were trying to make, if we were cruising, then I'd be quite happy to just go that way and that way all day. Yeah. Um, but because we're trying to do a passage, we need to get back. It's a shame, really, but this is what you have to weigh up between sailing, cruising, and all your other commitments.
Yeah, you can just about see the Elsa Cray coming up. What do you mean you can just about see it? <laughs> Nothing else on the horizon. <laughs> True. Sailing salty lads, and we have had all sorts. We've had beautiful, calm, glorious weather, and as you can see, we have had a howling gale. We are now at the bottom of Stranra Rock after a, quite a grueling passage, losing the dinghy, and uh, having to reset an anchor twice. But We've done it, and we're done. And quite frankly, all I can think of is uh, one of our yacht, a yachty friends, and he wants to know, was it an adventure? And quite frankly, it was. What have those girls been up to all night? So Bev, what happened with the um, dinghy last night? Well, we lost the dinghy during the storm, and it turned out that this painter didn't hold the dinghy, and we were wondering why. So we've looked at it this morning, and we found the reason. Um, oh, that's what's in the lock right area. This is your cause. <laughs> we're getting a coast guard broadcast. Right. Um, so what happens is we got this. This rope was in the boat. It's polypropylene, so it floats. So therefore, it's a good rope to use for the dinghy. But we find this. Mm -hmm. If I use this to tie a bowline as you do, like so. That's a good bowling to me. Yeah. What we find is this, this rope has a spring to it and if you take the pressure off it just undoes. Yeah. A few times. Uh, and it was bouncing like a cork last night. Yeah. So if you do this with a short shank coming through, as sometimes you do because you don't want a big long bit sticking out like that, once you've done that, as soon as the pressure comes off for any reason, oh. And it's gone. That's gone. That's so it. that's so where was, our so was the dinghy. And that's where our dinghy went, wasn't it, Bev? That's why the dinghy went for a burden. So this is not a good rope to have in a boat because you can't tie a knot in it that will hold because they just spring. Right. right. So what we're going to do with that rope? We're going to chuck it in the dinghy because that was a very, very expensive mistake, wasn't it, Bev? I'm decided not to classify it as a mistake. Okay. Um, we tied the right knot. Okay, maybe we could have tied a round turn and two half hitches, but that might have worked loose. This is a bad rope, and we had no way of knowing that when we used it. Yeah. So, it's an expensive lesson, certainly. But we didn't actually do anything wrong, other than we didn't test the knots in this rope before we used it. And who does that? You buy a rope, you use the rope. Well, in our case, we just had it on the boat, and we just used it because it was there, and we knew that it would float, and that the was what... The previous owners had this in the boat for years. Yeah, and we were looking whether it would float or not. Yeah. But, anyway, lesson learned. And that's it done. <sighs> it looks glorious though, Bev. You know. Yeah. Just a pity it's so darn rolly. You've got to take your hat off to people who are in really rolly seas because these are not as bad as that. We've just come in to Port Patrick which is up there somewhere. And this is our ladder all the way down oh. and this is our fender, big blue 
and as you can see we've put it right in front of the ladder and that is a great job a job for Big Blue this is spooky we've got absolutely nothing, nothing under, under the, the keel. keel very spooky if you fall off, I need it for the insurance oh, claim. Don't you dare! <laughs> oh. All this to go and find some gas! You're a natural climber. No, I'm not a natural climber. Natural bloody shouter. Can you hear the echo? I bought a boot to get fit. I think I'm going to succeed in. Yeah! One of the things I wanted <laughs> was to get fit. And uh, in sailing, there's lots and lots of ways in which you get fit. Currently, the way to get fit is I'm on the hunt for gas. So, I've had to hoist the gas canister from Salty Lass, which is over there. Ah, I'm now walking it round to where a taxi is waiting for me. And uh, I'm going to go off on a little hike, well, off on a drive, to go and find some gas from the local caravan park. Oh, I need to get fit. And this is definitely a way to get fit. That was a lot of exercise for a total bus, bust. It's not that um, there is no Calagas here at um, Port Patrick. It's just that um, it only gears for caravans and camper vans. And the smallest size they do is six kilograms. And the Calagas that we've got on board is only 2.75. And I didn't want to go and get the 60 um, because um, I didn't know whether that would actually fit our locker. So um, that's something else. Oh, love them. That's something else we've got to find out. Lots and lots of things we've got to learn. I love the generosity of people. I'm here at Port Patrick and um, I've been on the hunt for gas. Uh, my first um, port of call, which was the caravan park, was a complete bust because although they do have gas, they only have six kilogram gas. Now I know that six kilograms just isn't going to fit in our locker. So um, I came back down to the Crown Hotel and um, the guy there has actually given me 4.5 kilograms worth of gas. Uh, we're going to look at see whether it's in the locker. Obviously, if it fits the locker, then I need to buy gas. But the sheer fact that he's just let me have it, just so that I could see whether the size fits, is fantastic. I think that's so generous. We've just managed to get the uh, gas bottle down to the deck by the use of two ropes <sighs> and now for the all important test does it fit in the gas locker no right doesn't fit no of course you won't okay at least now we know Far too wide, I'm afraid. So, more exercise for me in the fact that I've got to now carry it back to the Crown Hotel. side of Port Patrick on the harbour wall to the other wall 
<laughs> in Port Patrick. It took us four hours because we went for a little detour. Big detour. What we did was we decided to make our passage to the Isle of Man and we did what we've always been trained to do, which is we take it to high water and go. And Port Patrick, um, because the harbour entrance is narrow and very rocky and it's quite a shallow harbour, uh, leaving at high water made a lot of sense to us. Especially as um, at low water there is no water under the keel at all, so that was definitely not, not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and as Bev says, it's such a, a rocky um, entrance. Uh, we needed as much water under our keel as possible. It was like, woo, we need that water. We hadn't gone very far out the entrance before we ran into a squall line. But the problem was, the squall was straight in our nose. And we also had the tide running against us at this point. So the combination of tide and squall meant that we made very, very little progress through the water. And after three hours, we'd made a total of seven miles progress. Um, Which is very little at all, you know, is. and it was just such hard going and the boat was... Um, the boat wasn't enjoying it, neither were we. Yeah, top of the gust it was 4-7, so um, it was very uncomfortable um, and we just weren't making any progress whatsoever, were we? No, so after three hours we decided this wasn't going to work, so we turned around and we went straight back to Port Patrick. It was only seven nautical miles after three hours and we made that back in 40 minutes. For 40 sure. minutes, which is nothing, you know, just sort of like it was so quick. We were screaming along. <laughs> yeah. What are you looking at, Prue? Are you looking at some charts? What charts are you looking at, Bet Prue? Oh, the passage to the Isle of Man. Fantastic. sails up. It's a nice sail, just like the RNLI told us it would be, except for the last few miles, where we got caught by a 4-7 blow, which gusted at 4 8 and we eventually got into Peel Harbour in the dark, wet, cold, and a bit worried. But, we've been up to see the Harbour Master this morning, and we're all sort of out, so the next thing to do is just get the boat tidied up, because things got a bit messy. Definitely. Um... The good thing about leaving uh, two, water, two hours before um, low water at the um, at Port Patrick was um, we got in uh, just at high tide here because there's only four hours in which you can get in, two hours before high water and two hours after. And Bev was going, open the Open the down gate. <laughs> gate. <laughs> I think they could have heard her in Douglas rather yeah. than having to be on the com for it. So now it's just a case of putting all the clips and harnesses away and putting the life jackets away and just getting the boat back into ship shape because quite frankly it's the boat's a mess. Absolutely, that's what boat life's like. Yep. So what are we cooking today, Bev? Well, time for a bit of scoff and we've got crew arriving later today to help us do the passage and we're vegetarians so uh, there's a bit of a meat fest going on. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! So what have we got then? We've got a bit of sausage, a bit of bacon, a bit of leftover chicken and um, 
some onions, some bread. You know, just stuff. Ooh, crispy bacon! Absolutely. I know, but I don't, it's that long since I've used the app. See, see, this won't stay on once we're there. Uh, when mine will stay on. Hello, so. darling! <laughs> it's, 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 what time is it? 20 past, ten, 20 past 10 at night, and we're just conflabbing over the route. We were going to go through the gap, which was the calf, was it? The calf of man? And it looks. Well, no, a bit we, like a swilly, so no, we think, we've made, oh no. We've made the decision we're not going to go through it. Yeah, because we won't be hitting on slack water, so it'll be a bit of a, a lumpy ride, girls. Yeah, not well, we're, we're not doing lumpy rides. No, no. So. <sighs> this is typical UK weather. And yes, we are going to go out in this. <laughs> <sighs> we're going to go out straight after that boat. And that boat is getting ready to slip. Just about see Peel Castle there into the distance. amount of vegetables uh, in my pan, loads of mushrooms, onions, peppers, everything. I'm adding the uh, seasoning mix. And I'm now going to roll it up. Meanwhile, Beverly is uh, putting the sails up. This is a lovely morning to finish the final leg of our journey home. We're moored just outside New Brighton, um, which is renowned for its um, uh, little lighthouse and it has a beautiful um, shipwreck uh, playground for the children, which I adore. Um, but we're moored by um, Tower. Yeah, Tower Cardinal on some moorings that were laid two weeks ago. <laughs> and if you pay attention in the background, you'll notice the boat's beginning to swing. That means that the um, tide is beginning tide to change. The tide is beginning to turn um, because uh, we're just sort of like half an hour out of Liverpool Marina, which is our destination. <sighs> but Last night was glorious. We actually saw the reflections of stars. It was so calm a night. It did mean that we were on motor because there was no wind, but it was a good passage. And after all the ups and downs of all this passage to get, to get the last home, I think we could all do with a quiet night. Oh, look at this. 
coming into Liverpool. Yeah, but we want you lot out. We want you to get in your way. We're not racing, you know. We haven't filled our safety sheet in. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. It's so close to home. We are currently in Marina Lock. And that was our audience. And we had to watch us come in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get this anymore. Oh. So what are you doing, Karen? Uh, I I'm trying to, uh, it might go buddying everywhere. We are celebrating. Oh, salty lass. Oh, there's another bottle of champagne coming. Has. Hiya, darling. Hi. And we are going to have a glass of Prosecco. Prosecco. I think it's coming out already. Oh, and we've got some more guests. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Oh, Careful, oh, darling. Oh, Way. <laughs> right, okay. Oh, come on aboard. Oh, nice bottle of champagne for you all. Oh my uh, god, no champagne! Oh, <laughs> we, congratulations on what you've achieved. On, we, we were just on the prosy, we were, we were happy. <laughs> oh, oh well god. Tom is just coming into the lock. Yeah. He's told me he expects a visit. <laughs> well, we haven't got any booze for him because we've just. Oh,